Well, good morning, everybody. Are you guys ready to worship this morning? Awesome. Why don't you stand and worship with us then? Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing my praise. Streams of mercy never cease. Songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious song in some from gleaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. I was lost in utter darkness. to just worship him. If you're worshiping with us online, thank you for taking that time to worship with us. If you are new in the sanctuary today and this is your first time, we trust that you got a bulletin and on the bottom of it is a place that you can fill out your uh, contact information. And if you would do that and just slip it in the offering, we just want to stay in contact with you and just say thank you for coming and joining with us. We want to give you updates at 3.30 uh, this afternoon will be our Hispanic service. Tomorrow, we as a church body are serving the harvest table. That means there's lots of work to be done and a place to serve and reach out to people who just desperately needed a free meal. I am telling you, it is a night uh, of just blessing others. But if you are working that, uh, our servers need to be there at 2.30. And if you're coming at five, that will help us serve the meal. So we need all the help that we can get. So join us for that. If you uh, signed up to bring food, make sure it's here uh, no later than tomorrow morning so that we can have everything ready for that. Also, Wednesday night, I want to challenge you, if you've not been coming to Wednesday night, to come. God is doing a new thing in our Wednesday nights. Six o'clock is prayer time. Those of you who have joined us in prayer at six, what a precious time we have had just in his presence. 
If we want revival, the Bible says we pray. Let's get together and let's pray. Make that, mark that on your calendar. And then Wednesday night, we're going to be finishing a Bible study called Praise is My Weapon. Praise is My Weapon. And you need to be here. I want to challenge you. There's youth group. And I know that Pastor Jeremy has a divine message for our youth. And our kids have a program with Miss Tracy that she just absolutely loves teaching our kids. So make sure you're here with that. And then on March 25th, on Saturday, there's a bridal shower for Amber Martinson, the daughter of Mark and Lori Martinson, at 1.30 here at the church. And we want to bless Amber and Austin as they start their wedding and their new journey in life together. So we ask you to join us for that. But don't you believe God is good? And his goodness is poured out on us. Today, I want to challenge you, and I know I've used that word a lot today, but I want to challenge you to lift your hands and open your heart as we're led into worship. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is. Yeah. 
better than you oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you oh there's nothing church just begin to praise him this morning we worship you Lord there's nothing that compares to you God nothing in this world
this morning.
just the voices. And hallelujah. And hallelujah. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. And hallelujah. And hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, and truly we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah unto the maker of all the universe. God, we worship you. Lord, we thank you for what you have done for us. We thank you for the price that you paid for our salvation, the blood that you shed, that we can know that now our sins can be forgiven. And so, Lord, today we don't have anything else that we could but say is hallelujah because you are a great God and we worship you for who you are Lord as we come before your presence this morning we come with requests you said that we can let our requests be known unto God and then your peace passes all understanding will keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus Lord, I pray that you would be with the various needs that are represented within our body this morning. I ask that you would be with those that have needs that may be viewing online, that right now they would be reaching out to you for that need that they might have, and that, God, you would minister to them and that you would meet the need. Lord, I pray that you would be with John as he's going to undergo this surgery that all would go well and that it would complete the healing that you can do. God, we ask that you would be with Jim. We thank you that we could see him today. But Lord, he needs your touch. He needs a touch of God within his physical body. And I pray that the healing virtue of Jesus Christ might flow into his body, that that heart or that blood pressure would stay where it needs to be and that all of the other needs that would be present would be met. God, we just ask for other needs that might be made, that you would just minister to those needs. Lord, have your way today, for you are God, and we are your people. We are the sheep of your pastures. And we can honestly say that the Lord, you lead us beside still waters, that you are our shepherd, and we will follow you. God, just move by your spirit in the furtherance of this service. Speak into our hearts and to our lives the word which you would have for us. And God, may your name be glorified in this time. And now, Lord, touch your people. Minister to needs and touch individual lives. Lord, we just commit these things to you. And we ask, God, your blessings to be upon your people at this time. And we would say, speak unto us today, for we are listening. God, have your way, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, thank you, worship team. Appreciate the worship team. You know, I was been reading a book called The Awe of God. And the minister in this book was talking about how he had went into a great convention in Brazil. And and, uh, when he pulled up, there were large buses that were lining the the curbs and the parking lots were full. And so he knew it was a full house. and, And so he was so excited about what he was going to experience as far as the presence of God in that setting. And he said he went in and he was very much surprised because he said there was no sense of the presence of God whatsoever. And he said, I begin to wonder why wasn't God moving in this, in this time? 
And he said, I looked out during the worship time. People were standing without being involved in the worship. They were not lifting their hands. They were not involving. They were looking around. They were um, maybe wandering around the convention center. And he said, God spoke to him and said, that's the reason my presence is not here. And so he got up and he just said, folks, the presence of God isn't here because you don't know how to worship. And uh, they led, he led them into a worship service and it said that it is phenomenal. They said that before the end was over, that there was a, a rushing wind that blew through that convention center. And all that they could give it is that the power of the Holy Spirit, as He was at the day of Pentecost, once again came as a rushing mighty wind. And how much we need that. And so we appreciate our worship team and the time that they invest in bringing us into that time of worship and that time of praise. And so I want to encourage you, let's don't look around, let's just be engaged in the worship and see what God has for us. You know, we're, we're looking at the weather and the, the snow and all of that comes with it, the ice and all that, all that is involved. But I read an entry into a diary that I want to read this morning. August 12th, moved to our new home in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now, if anybody's from Grand Rapids, Michigan, this is just the way the story goes. Moved into our home in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It is beautiful here. The lakes are so blue, I can hardly wait to see them covered. I love it here. October 14th. Michigan is the most beautiful place on earth. The leaves are turning all colors with shades of red and orange. Went for a ride through the country and saw some deer. They are so graceful. Certainly, they are the most wonderful animals on earth. This must be paradise. I love it here. November 11th, deer season is opened. I can't imagine anyone wanting to kill such a gorgeous creature. Hope it will snow soon. December 12th, it snowed last night. I woke up this morning to find everything blanketed in white. It looked like a postcard. We went outside and cleaned the snow off the steps and shoveled the driveway. We had a wonderful snowball fight, and I won. And when the snowball came by, we had to shovel the driveway again. And we can all say an amen to that. What a beautiful place. I love Michigan. More snow last night. Couldn't get out of the driveway to get to work. I'm exhausted from shoveling Rot, that dirty, rotten snow plow. December 22nd. More of that white stuff fell last night. My, my, I got blisters on my hands from shoveling. I think the snow plow hides around the corner and waits until I'm done shoveling the driveway, that dirty skunk. December 25th. Merry Christmas. More blooming snow. If I ever get my hands on that good-for-nothing jerk of a driver of that snowplow, I swear I'll kill him. I don't know why they don't use more salt on the roads to melt that treacherous ice. December 27. More white junk fell last night. Been inside for three days now, except for shoveling out the driveway after the snowplow goes through every time. Can't go anywhere. Car stuck in a mountain of white, and weatherman says expecting another 10 inches of stuff again tonight. Do you know how many shovels full of snow 10 inches is? December 28th, the weatherman was wrong. We got 34 inches of that rotten stuff this time. At this rate, it won't melt before next summer. The snow plow got stuck up in the road, and that jerk came to my door and asked if he could borrow my shovel. After I told him I had broken six shovels already shoveling all that stuff that he had pushed into my driveway, I broke the last one over his head. (laughs) January 4th, finally I got out of the house today, went to the store to get food, 
And on the way back, a stupid deer ran in front of my car and I hit it. It did about $3,000 worth of damage to my car. Those ignorant beasts should all be killed. With those hunters had killed them all last summer. May 3rd, took the car to the garage in town. Would you, would you believe the thing is rusting out from all that lousy salt that they put all over the roads to this year? May 10th, moved to Phoenix. I can't imagine why anybody would live in their right mind would ever live in the godforsaken state of Michigan. And I thought of that, I thought, man, we can relate to that. And uh, that snow plow, when it comes through, and we have to shovel again. And, and uh, But thank God we have a um, hope that there's a time coming when that stuff is going to begin to melt. Someone said that they're saying now that, that uh, you're supposed to get your ice houses off of the lake before Ju July 4th and the fireworks. So that's probably the way it's going to be. But when you look at all this, you know all of us have gone through situations that are not very pleasant. They're not very happy. I mean, they're just, they drain us of all of our ambition. They drain us of all of our, of all of our anxiousness. They drain us of everything that we have. And maybe this morning you're here and you're going through a situation like that. You're going through a situation that you cannot control. It's beyond your control. And you don't know what to do about it in the meantime. And you're wondering, where is it ever going to end? When is it ever going to end? Well, this morning I have a word for you. And that word is, there is hope. There is hope. And this morning I'm going to be speaking on the subject of hope. Now, the Webster Dictionary gives us a definition of hope is to cherish a desire with anticipation. And I like that, to cherish a di desire with anticipation. We want something to happen or be true. To desire with great expectation of obtainment or fulfillment to expect with confidence. But all of the, all of the uh, definitions is to expect with anticipation, to expect that something is going to happen, is going to be true, to desire with expectation and the obtainment of fulfillment, and to expect with confidence. That's the hope that we have in Christ. That's the hope that we have in Him. Now, we talk about hope during the Christmas season, but the resurrection of Jesus Christ at Easter reminds us that we serve a risen Savior. We remember that chorus that we sing, Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, we know that, we can, that He has all things in His control and all things in His power. And so when we recognize that we serve a risen Savior, we know that there is hope because he lives. We can place our hope in his plans and in his purposes for our life. If Jesus were not alive, we would have no hope. If he had not risen from the grave on the third day, where would our hope be? Because our hope in reality, in the Christian faith, our hope is a pillar of our faith. We have faith of things that are hoped for, and that's an evidence of things not seen. And so hope is very closely related to our faith. And if we say we have faith, then we have hope. Fulfillment is going to happen. It's going to be obtained. It's going to come to pass. And so we have to have hope in things in life. And all of us, no doubt, have hoped for something. I know that I have hoped when I take my car to the garage, my first hope is I sure hope it isn't going to cost much. I sure hope that I'm not going to be out a lot of money to get this thing repaired. That's my hope. Or when I go to the doctor, what do we hope? Well, I hope that all the tests come out good and I have a good report. And so we hope for these things with anticipation. We are expecting that to happen 
within our lives. And we're waiting for it to come to pass. We have hope in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the coming of Christ, the rapture of the church, is our blessed hope. It is our hope that is founded in his soon return. And maybe we are here, or you are here this morning, or you are watching online, and you feel that all hope is gone. But I want to assure you that you have an eternal hope that is found in Jesus Christ. And at times of trial and tribulation, that he will give us the hope that we have lost and will be um, rekindled within our lives once again. At this Easter season, we can hope in Jesus because of the resurrection. And the resurrection brings us the newness of hope because he is alive. Peter writes concerning this in his first epistle, 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to be reading verses 3 through 9. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Now, everybody that brought your Bible, I'll give you a chance to find that. I've heard that uh, they bring you bring your Bibles, but you don't have time to find the text. So we'll give you time now. 1 Peter chapter 1, reading for verses 3 through 9. Peter writes this, All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. I'm, living, I'm reading from the New uh, Living Translation. Now we can live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show your faith in genuine, is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Through your faith, is, though, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. And so here P Peter is writing a message which is really a, a bringing about the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ and him crucified, him raised from the dead and ascending into heaven. Now when Peter is talking about this great hope that we have in the coming of Christ, and all the joy that is going to be revealed at this time. He is giving us a joy that is going to motivate us to live for Christ and to be what God wants us to be. Now, this hope isn't something that we once accept, and then we're going to cruise on into eternity. But it is a hope that is clear. It is a hope that is right here, right now. It is a hope that the Bible says is our expectation. It is our anticipation. So no matter what we may be going through, there is hope. There is hope because of who Jesus is. We read in chapter 3 of this portion of Scripture where Peter says, Now we live with great expectation. The time for having hope is now. You see in our world around us, man, we, we need to have hope. It looks hopeless. 
I mean, the way things are going in our world, the, the way things are going in our nation, the way things are going, it can't, can't get any worse, we would think. But in the midst of all that is going on, church, we must have hope. And that hope must be steadfast in the gospel and it be, must be steadfast in the person of Jesus Christ himself. That we can have hope in the midst of all of the bad news that comes across by ways of media and what have you. That we can have hope no matter what the, what the diagnosis of the physician was. That we can have hope no matter what the repair price was going to be. That I can know that my hope is found on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. My hope is found in that way. And so this morning I ask you the question, are you expecting anything from God? Are you expecting anything from God? When you come into the church on Sunday morning, do you expect anything from God? Or do you think, well, we're just going to go in, we're going to sing some courses, we're going to have a, word, a message, and we're going to be dismissed and we'll be on our way. Or when we come into the churches and say, Lord, I'm coming into the, fel into the fellowship of the believers, into the house of God, and I am expecting something to happen. I am expecting to have a move of the Holy Spirit. I'm expecting God to come down and manifest himself. We know that we're going to have his presence. The Bible says he is on my presence. So you and I walk around in the presence of God as already. But there is another catch on that. And that is the manifest presence of God. And that is when God comes down in his power and in his might. And when he comes and he ministers healing to bodies, salvation to the lost, deliverance to those who are bound. That's the manifest presence of God. And that's what I'm coming to expect. I'm expecting God to do some great and some mighty things within our midst because God said that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And folks, we're living in the last days. And if he said he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh in the last days, why not expect it now? Why not come and say, God, I'm expecting you to meet me in a very real way. I'm expecting you to meet me and to give to me that which I am hoping for. I'm hoping for my healing. I'm hoping for deliverance. I'm hoping for my family to get back together. I'm hoping for this and that. Why not expect it to happen? Because we hope and our hope is in God. God wants us to live with expectation. He wants us to live with that. What do we want him to do within our lives? What do you want God to do within your life? What do you want God to do in your family? What do you want God to do in our nation? What do you want God to do around us? What do we really want God to do? And when we say what I want God to do, do we hope that God will do it? Do we say that my faith is going to be that God is going to do it? Oh, I know I've fallen on hard times. I've known I've come into the hardship and things have gone wrong and we wonder how far it can go. But there comes a time that we have to let our faith be made known and say, my hope is in God and in him alone because he is the one who will minister to my heart and to my life. You see, Paul here was writing concerning the expectation of the return of Christ. This was promised in John chapter 14, verse 3. It's a portion of scripture that we should all be familiar with. John chapter 14, verse 3. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. That's a promise. And folks, if Jesus made it, that promise he is not a God that should lie if he said that I will come and get you or I will come again and receive you unto myself that where you are where I am there you may be also he's given us a promise it's going to be fulfilled he's going to do it we are still waiting for the return of Christ 
We have people that say, well, I've been waiting for X number of years, so I don't believe it's ever going to happen. I believe it's going to happen. And the reason I believe it's going to happen, because I find it written in the pages of God's Word. And Jesus said, I will come again and receive you. And so if Jesus said it, I believe it. And we're still waiting for that. Think if you were Peter. Peter said he was living in the last days, and he thought that he was going to witness the return of Christ. Now, that was thousands of years ago. Now, if Peter was believing that, and if Peter was waiting for that, how much closer do you think we are to the coming of Christ than Peter was? How much closer are we to hear the trumpet of God sound and the voice of the archangel give the shout of triumph and we are caught up together in the clouds, in the air, to meet the Lord in the air? And if Peter thought it, we must have that idea within our mind. Now notice verse 6 of our text. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead. There is, even though you must endure many trials uh, for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is tested as fire tests and purifies gold. But Peter says, be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure the trial becomes very obvious within our lives is that we do go through trials. We go through tribulations. And how much are we willing to go through in following Christ and keeping our hope in Him? Peter is convinced that there is joy ahead. He's talking about the heaven that awaits us, the reality of the coming of Christ, and those who know Christ that have this hope that when he comes, that all of our trials on earth are going to be gone. The Bible tells us that weeping may endure for a mor morning or for the night, but joy comes in the morning. You see, there is a hope. There is joy that comes in the morning, and it is a priceless inheritance. And that's what the Apostle Peter says, that our, faith, our hope is a priceless inheritance. In verse 4, he says, And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. We have a hope, a priceless inheritance. What we have, on, what we have here on earth cannot even be compared to what we're going to have in heaven. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. He talks about suffering, and we all go through it. Jesus told us that we would go through trials and tribulations. He said, in the world you will have tribulations. He didn't say you might or you maybe will. He said, in the world you will have tribulations. But he said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And then the, or Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory He will reveal to us later. That's our hope, church. What we suffer now is not even worthy to be compared to the glory that is going to be revealed to us later. And so all the things we may go through is worth the cost. That which we are moving forward to, that which we are looking toward, is far greater than what we currently experience. And so we get our focus upon the hope of Christ. He is our hope. The empty tomb is a hope into our lives. And maybe there are seasons that in our lives there it looks and it sounds so hopeless. And the hope in Christ means that he lives within us. And his hope is far better than what we live in around us. The Bible said in the 121st Psalm, 
that sometimes we just simply need to lift our eyes to where our, comes our help. Psalm 121, beginning with verse 1 and reading verse 2. I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I look up to the mountains or unto the hills from whence does my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And that is our hope, is that Jesus is alive. Remember at the ascension of Christ when all of the disciples were standing in awe as Jesus was going up into the clouds and, and coming and disappearing from their vision and they stood in awe before, before that account and that scene. Remember what the angels said to them? Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you will so come in like manner as you have seen him go. That is our hope. And that empty tomb of the resurrection is the hope that we have that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Because right now he's seated at the right hand of God the Father ever to make intercession for us. And it's the God that who created the heavens and the earth. And we might say in our minds, well, if God created the heavens and the earth, why would he be so concerned about me? I'm just nothing but clay. I'm nothing but dust. I'm nothing but flesh and blood. So why would he be concerned about me? But Psalm 8, verse 4, we see an encouragement that we can receive from the Lord in this time of thinking, well, who am I that God would see me? Psalm 8, verse 4, What are mere mortals that you should think about them? Human beings that you should care about for them. The psalmist had the same question, who are we? Who are more, more, more mortals that you should be and think about them? But we know that we are in the eyes of God. We are the apple of God's eye. We are the, 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 the uh, fellowship. We are the body of Christ. We are the children of God. And if God is a God of love, of which he is, he is a concern about his children. And what we can base our God confidence in this morning is not upon the outside circumstances that we see. But if you're going through a circumstance this morning, no matter what it might be, maybe it might be physical, maybe it might be financial, maybe it might be some other need that you might have, take hope. There is a hope that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he will see us through and he will lead us and guide us into all things. And we can take hope today. And we can think about the hope that we have and come to expect what God is going to do within our lives. And so today I want to encourage you as we close. Take some time today and think about what hope you have for. Think about something that you have hope for. Think about it because the Bible tells us that when we have hope, it is with expectancy. It is with anticipation. And so this morning, I just simply ask the question, are you here there this morning or are you viewing online by live stream and you have situations that seem hopeless? I want to remind you of something. There is a hope. There is a hope, and that hope is Jesus. Father, this morning, we thank you for the hope of a risen Lord. We thank you for the fact and the truth that the tomb is empty. It was only borrowed for three days, and then it was vacated. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came out of the, out of the tomb victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And that you came and you ascended into the right hand of the throne of God, making intercession for us. And you are our mediator between God and us. And we know that as you're seated on the right hand of the throne of God, you are witnessing our case. And you are pleading our case before God. 
And God, we thank you this morning that you love us and that you care for us and that we have hope. And Lord, I pray this morning, if there's any in this service that could say, well, I, I don't have much to hope for. My hope is gone. May they be reminded there is a hope and his name is Jesus. Lord, whatever it might be, may they be reminded. Or maybe there are those that are viewing by live stream that say, I have no hope. You don't understand what I've gone through. I may not know and I may not understand, but one thing I do know is there is hope. There is hope in Christ. And we give you the praise, the honor for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand, shall we, this morning as we sing that chorus. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. time and if you're here this morning and maybe you feel like you're where I, where I was speaking of in a hopeless situation don't know what you can do you don't know what the answer is and you'd like special prayer we want to encourage you just come and to the front there will be those of others that will gather around you they'll pray for you pray for strength that's what the body of Christ is all about that's what body ministry is we minister to one another, and the Bible says, Bear ye one another's burdens. So we're going to sing it one more time, and as we sing it, if you're here and you have a special need and would like special prayer, we want to invite you to come. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. 
Praise God. Lord, this morning as we dismiss this service, may we leave this place with hope that we can come to expect it, that we can come to anticipate it, that we can come with the, with the idea of knowing it will come to pass. Because if you have spoken it in your word, it will be found. God, I pray that you'd bless each one this morning. Bless those who are viewing online this morning that your touch would be upon their lives and that they would sense the touch of God within their physical being, within their finances, within their needs that they might have. God bless them. And I pray for your people in the church this morning that you would just lay your blessings upon each one of us. God, may your hand be upon us today, that we would just feel your presence, and that, Lord, we would come to expect it. That when it happens, we would say, well, I can't believe it. Or rather, we would say, this is what I expect. God, meet our expectations for you to manifest yourself in a very powerful way. And now, Lord, may your blessings be upon your people. Lead us and guide us. Keep us mindful of you in all ways, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, the offering will be received in the back for you to drop in, or you can receive online or by the Tidely app or by our website. God bless you. We appreciate each one of you. We love you. And go with that hope that God is with you.